Hey, it's Chris. Today I'm gonna to be talking about some iPad accessories that I just can't put down. I mean, sometimes I get some stuff and it seems really cool, but after I'm done testing it, I set it aside. But other things, when they arrive, I test them, I finish the testing, and I can't put them aside because they're so good. They've made a big impact. They become very useful and integrated into my workflow. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Specifically, we're gonna be covering an accessory that makes the iPad a lot more functional in a lot more places. We're gonna be talking about an accessory that lets me get some real gaming done. And then to wrap things up, I've got an accessory that's just critical to my personal and work life. Keeps everything running. Now, one thing I don't yet have in hand, but that's gonna be on the way shortly, and I'll be showing it off on the channel in the future, is a portable Thunderbolt drive to take advantage of that new Thunderbolt port on the new 2021 iPad Pros. So if you're interested in that, that's worth subscribing for, but I will link up the one I'm going to be getting down in the description if you wanna get a jump on things. Now, of course, I've already covered the Kensington Studio Dock, and I've also covered the 12 South Hover Bar Duo. Both of these are excellent iPad accessories, and I'll go ahead and link to my previous coverage of those down in the description, so if you're new around here, you can get caught up. But let me clue you into my iPad life. Check this out. This is what I'm calling my iPad corner, and it's really just a chair and a C table that matches the wood of my desk, and that C table hangs over the chair, sort of like a mini desk. And that's really it so far. Now that blank wall that you see, I'm planning on adding in some nano leaf lights or something to add some ambiance and light it up over there. So that's kind of just a preview of how the office is coming along. At some point when it all gets done, I will do a proper tour. Let's talk about the first accessory of the day, the tripod standing desk from Intention Design, which is actually exactly what it sounds like. It's a desk surface mounted to tripod legs which makes it very portable and super adjustable. The second that I saw this in an Instagram ad, I was like, whoa, I have to have this. So I reached out to Intention and I was like, hey, I'd like to feature this, can you send it? They were nice enough to do it. And ever since it arrived, I've basically been addicted. It's just super convenient. Now here it is sitting on the desk. It's nice and compact. Literally, this thing is so light, it's just four and a half pounds. But what I really love about this is how adjustable it is. So you know how when you're on FaceTime or something, it can be actually hard if you're using like a magic keyboard or something to dial in the perfect positioning? Well, that was before this tripod desk here. I mean, if you think about it, the iPad is such a portable device, so doesn't it make a whole bunch of sense to also have a portable surface or workstation to go along with it? I think it does. I can set this up in the iPad corner, get some work done, get some gaming in, or I can stand it up if I feel like stretching, maybe moving my feet a little bit. That's no problem at all. It's just it's a matter of seconds to get it converted. I can haul this into the bedroom. I can take this over to the couch. There's really nowhere that it can't go. And what's cool is it actually ranges in height from 1.8 feet all the way up to 4.8 feet, which is actually tall enough for anybody under seven feet to use it. And what's cool is it's got these little catches here at the bottom, which actually fit a MacBook perfectly too, that will keep your iPad or your MacBook from slipping off if you have it tilted at an angle, which is great foresight. But I keep finding all these amazing uses for this. Obviously, it's really great for writing and it's really nice for handwriting or drawing, anything with an Apple Pencil. I mean, if you've already stuck your paper-like screen protector on, which I highly recommend, then what's the next step for you? Maybe it's something like this, because as they say, it hits a little bit different when you're not glued to your desk. So this thing's 179 bucks. A typical standing desk is what? Like 500 plus dollars for a decent one or a nice one? So what I've found is this is a really fun way to make your iPad experience just feel completely new again. And hey, if you're liking the vibe of this video so far, this is a great time to get yourself subscribed Number one, so you don't miss more of my iPad accessories videos. I like to stick out some iPad apps videos from time to time, got lots of recommendations. Plus, the new iPads, both models are gonna be arriving soon, and I'm gonna get them unboxed and tested and compared. So I'm just saying, this is a good time to subscribe so you don't miss out. All right, we're gonna be talking about the latest PlayStation controller here, because guess what? It just officially became compatible with the latest iOS and iPadOS update. Now, of course, you could use a controller with your iPhone, with your iPad previously, talking about things like Steel Series, you've seen those, but if you're gonna go all in on gaming, why not get the latest and greatest that either Xbox or PlayStation has to offer. You know that's the best of the best. Plus, haptic feedback is fully supported here. So look, I think we can ask the question right now as part of this video, 
is serious gaming possible on an iPad, even the iPad Pro. Well, let me give you a rundown of some of the games that I've been playing and you tell me what you think. For me, when it comes to games with controller support, it really doesn't get much better than Call of Duty Mobile. There's NBA 2K21, which is in Apple Arcade now, and that's definitely a great controller experience. Fantasia is a pretty new game, also from Apple Arcade, and it has some really interesting graphics. I'm not sure it's exactly my style, but it's interesting and some people are really gonna love it. And then if you just kinda wanna chill, you do want a more casual experience, you got things like Asphalt 9 still, or you've got Spider from Apple Arcade, which is still kinda fun, and so is Agent Intercept, also from Apple Arcade. But yes, those three there and games like that are more casual, but where something like this shines is when you get into the heavy hitter game category. And for that, you really have to use something like Google Stadia, which, is not dying. The reports of its death have been greatly exaggerated, but I've been testing it out. It's a very fluid experience and I've been having a lot of fun there. The only real problem right now with Stadia is that it just doesn't have an amazing game selection. But even so, it's as close to console quality as you're going to get on an iPad. And that said, there is plenty of fun to be had. Just for instance, you guys know I like Star Wars, so I've been checking out Jedi Fallen Order, which has been a lot of fun with this great controller. And then also Destiny 2 with the expansion packs has also been a great place where I've been able to get a lot of use out of this controller. I mean, that game and its expansions alone can provide hours and hours of quality game time. One tip for you though, if you are gonna play a game like Destiny with this controller, go ahead and turn off the screenshot option in your Apple settings under general and then under controller settings because this button will take a screenshot by default. Turn that off though so you can access things like maps. I think it just kind of gets in the way otherwise. Okay, so without making this an hour long segment, what can we say about the state of iPad gaming? Well, for non-casual gamers, I would say it's not as good as the PC or console experience, obviously, and yet, it's better than I think most people probably realize. Okay, the last thing I wanna cover today is maybe a little bit less exciting, and yet it's incredibly useful, and that is the Sateki Dock 5 multi-device charging station. Now for me, I've got this living on a shelf just behind where I sit at my desk, so it's within arm's reach if I just wheel my chair back slightly, and it's become my go-to charging hub, not just for my iPad or even iPads, but also for my phone, thanks to the Qi wireless charger, and then also for things like my AirPods Max or other devices, thanks to this bank of USB-Cs right along the side. All right, and a closer look here reveals two fast charge ports right here, along with USB-C, PD 20 watt charging. So you've got options, lots of options. You got four bays here, one, two, three, four. So this is gonna be really great for, obviously, if you have multiple devices to be charging, but if you're a family that has a ton of different devices and you're sick of chargers being scattered in every room, this is a nice, neat, clean station where you can keep everybody juiced up. Now, by the time you get a bunch of cords hanging out of here, yes, it's a little less aesthetic it doesn't look quite as good as it does when nothing's plugged in, but for the convenience, that's completely fine. I can live with that because it's so useful. Honestly, for 60 bucks, this is one of the best purchases uh, that somebody with an iPad can make. It's one of those foundational items, and as the years stretch on and we have older devices still laying around that can still be put to use, this is just one of those things that's gonna help us get more out of what we currently have along with those relics from the past that just haven't been put out to pasture quite yet. All right, that's it for this video. This was something a little bit different. I know we really hit the news hard. We did some comparisons and we've been doing some buying guides. And I think that was all very useful at the tail end of Apple's April event there. And of course, WWDC is coming up and it's gonna be a big event for iPad users. I've made lots of videos about why I think that is. So you can go back and check them out, but get yourself subscribed if you're new around here. If you want my in-depth coverage of WWDC this year and especially how it's going to impact iPad owners. This stuff is all linked up down in the description, nice and handy for you to go check the prices, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.